very good question in 2009. In April 2009, it was the best question I got all year. Here was a question. How many forces are there? We know like there's force of gravity, there's electricity, there's magnetism. How many forces are there out there? Who's got a guess? Four? Four. It's thousands and thousands of forces. Because there's a force, for example, if any dentists in the room, anybody do dentistry? Anybody work with metals or metallurgy? Okay, have you ever found if you're doing like a gold tooth, for example, that to shape the tooth on some days it doesn't work? Has that ever happened to you in your career? I've had dentists tell me that. Why is that? Because there's a force that affects gold that's connected to the sun. If there's something weird happening with the sun, let's say there's an eclipse occurring, or you know, something is going on with the sun with the other planets, there's a lineup, it will screw up the ability of gold to crystallize. That's a force that connects gold to the sun. Do you see that? Now how far that goes? Anybody here ever studied astrology? You know about the planetary forces then. And it just goes on and on and on. Rudolf Steiner very simply categorized it into two basic forces. There are astrological or meteorological forces, the forces that come from the heavens down, and then there are telluric forces. Very good word. T-E-L-L-U-R-I-C. These are energies that come from the earth and that come up. And we have blocked those telluric forces most of our life. Since we were children, we have not gotten enough of those telluric forces. And what Rudolf Steiner said, this is fast. I, I finally, after 10 years of trying to unlearn everything, I was finally able to get to a point with Rudolf Steiner where I could read it innocently and get into his mindset. Any students of Steiner here, students of biodynamic agriculture, Waldorf education, one of the great insights, he, he, it's right there, he said that when you are exposed to too much meteorological forces, too much sun energy without the counterbalancing earth energy or telluric forces, what will occur is crystallization or calcification. You will immediately notice if you do have calcification troubles, especially in your lower extremities, that when you ground yourself, this is a great grounding pad. This is what I have underneath my computer, right? So my feet are on that. So when that computer is sending its EMFs at me, Yep, it blocks it. It shields you because you become part of the earth and it just shields right, goes right over you. We're going to show you that, show you images of that. So the original medicine. Cortisol. Who is familiar with the research on cortisol that's come to light in the last 10 years that's indicating that these elevated cortisol levels are bringing forth a whole bunch of problems? We've got sleep disorders, hypertension, the whole list is there. Autoimmune conditions, uh, er erratic glucose levels, blood sugar Er erratic behavior, mood disturbances, decreased immune response, and of course, changes in bone density. Watch this. This is a normal 24-hour cortisol profile. So it changes. Just like everything in our body, very important word, is in a, a cascade of circadian rhythms. Right? Everything is in a pulsation. Our heart doesn't go boop. Right? What does it do? Bup, bup. Bup, bup. Bup, bup. It's in a rhythm. That rhythm can speed up, bup, up, bup, up, bup, up, bup, up, or it can slow down, bup, up, bup, up. But it's a rhythm. That's, the, that's this. Okay, everything is going on like that. Our hormones are like that, all our neurotransmitters. This is a study that was done. It's called The Biological Effects of Grounding the Human Body During Sleep as Measured by Cortisol Secretion and Subjective Reporting of Sleep, Pain, and Stress. Here it is. On your left side, you're going to see 24-hour cortisol, cortisol secretion profile before grounding and then after. Immediate changes in cortisol levels. Okay, watch this. Mostly affecting females. Most pronounced effects. You're going to see this, this pattern coming up quite a bit. And the pattern is, as soon as you ground yourself, all your circadian rhythms go to order. As soon as you unground yourself, they go to chaos. And what Clint has theorized, and I think it's accurate, has been my experience for sure, is that the earth is a reference point for our circadian rhythms. Which means that every time we touch the earth barefoot, 
the, we get like, it's like Greenwich Mean Time. Do you remember the old days, like the grandfather clock? Every now and then you had to go like, I remember when I was a kid growing up in the 70s, we had grandfather clocks in the house. And you notice that after a while, it'd go out of time. Remember you had to pull the chain and get the whole thing wound up? But you'd notice like after about three months, the whole thing was like two minutes slow all of a sudden. So you had to go call up 555-1212. Isn't <laughs> that a trip how we forget these things? And then get the exact time and then change it. That's what grounding does for you. It allows your body to get the references. When you, by the way, if you jump into the ocean, boom, you're grounded. You'll notice at any time that you have anxiety, cortisol levels are out of whack, you go jump in the ocean, it's off you. Emotional disturbance, which is electrical disturbance, you jump in the ocean, boom, it's off of you, just like that. You go jump into an ice cold lake, whatever's gone wrong has gotten better all of a sudden. You can't even remember what you were thinking about at that point. I remember when, when Super Goji Girl first, first came to work for me years ago. And I said, you're going to be jumping into ice cold water. You're going to want to. She said, no, I'm not going to want to. Now she's beating me into the water. That much of a turnaround. That much of a flip around. Because you start to feel such health benefits. And it's electrical. It's an electrical phenomenon. And that, those electrical Elect the electrons, that electricity rushes into you, and that's what you feel, isn't it? You jump in ice cold water, you feel, it's a rush. That's what's occurring. Very important if you've been in planes, trains, or automobiles. Because we're, you know, it's rubber. We're not, it's like, we're not connected to the earth, and so what it builds up is a static charge, static electricity. And we're going to talk about, this is the first time it's ever been revealed to the public, how you can be grounded in your car. Now you can tune into that so you get less irritability while driving. You're awake longer, can focus longer. This is important if you're driving eight hours at a stretch. I have to do that quite a bit. Very important information. Okay, let's keep going. So here's what the results are indicating. The grounding the human body to the earth during sleep reduces nighttime levels of cortisol and resynchronizes cortisol hormones to more in alignment with the natural 24-hour rhythm. Changes were most apparent in women. Why do you think that is? Because generally, there's more circadian rhythm issues going on in women, right? More hormones, more of a variety of hormones. And women generally can't kind of go against the nature's laws as much as men can. Otherwise, things will come up. Yeast infections come up. Things that will throw the female body out of balance faster than men. So that's why it's usually women who show up to health lectures. Right, because you can't get away with the, the transgressions as much. We know now, too, this is something I'm going to be hinting on all weekend long, that there is something going on with the thyroid and these electrons. Rudolf Steiner described it this way, and again, I, I, just, I can't say enough about Rudolf Steiner. I, I'm absolutely shocked by what I'm reading every time I read Rudolf Steiner. He said that we're basically a plant that's been turned upside down. Like the baby in its natural position is upside down, isn't it? It's inverted. The yogis in their mastery of the physical realm, their mastery of longevity, are, what are they doing? They're upside down. They're inverted. So, for, so what is it about this inversion? Well, one of the things is that our negatively charged pole is right there in our neck. It's right on our thyroid, which to me indicates, and I don't have exact evidence of this, but to me it indicates that our thyroid is a very large sink for electrons. Meaning that if we run deficient in earth energy, that our thyroid starts going, Whoa, something's wrong here. And this is one of the reasons why the yogis always recommended that when you get upside down, like in yoga, which we're doing at 7.30 tomorrow morning, 